Hi everyone and welcome to International Students Day at the American University of Rome. I'm Melissa Abraham and I graduated from AUR in 2011. This is Nohea. <laughs> Why don't you present yourself, Nohea? Hi, my name is Nohea. I'm an admissions counselor at the American University of Rome. Um, I also graduated from AUR in business studies um, in 2011 with Melissa. And if you have any questions about the business program or about our programs here, you can always um, live chat with Adrian, who's our background guy. And Hello, I'm Adrian, the background guy. <laughs> um, I am also an alumni of AUR. And uh, you'll be hearing my voice every once in a while. If you have any questions, please do ask. And uh, I will be happy to answer, or I'll be happy to pass them on to our hosts. Okay. So, Noya, why don't you tell us a little bit about the admissions process at AUR? Sure. So, the admissions process at AUR is really simple. Um, it all starts when you go online to our website, www.aur.edu, and click apply. And there it'll pop down different applications. So for transfer students, for first year in college or freshman students, uh, we don't differentiate between international or um, students from the United States because we are so international. Um, so there's just the one application for all students? Yes. So you just go online, hit the apply button, and it takes you to our online application system. You fill out the application, hit the submit button, upload all the necessary documents, and pay an application fee of 50 euros. And once you send that to us, then we review the application. We review all applications individually. Um, we actually go through a second process when we call for interviews. So we really do like to discuss um, every single applicant's application with them and understand why they wanted to come to AUR and what makes them a good candidate for our community. Um, right, so then why should a student come to AUR? That's a good question, Alyssa. <laughs> can I ask, can I ask <laughs> a new question? <laughs> sure. <laughs> why did you choose AUR? Um, okay, well, I chose AUR because I'm an international student myself. I don't come from one particular place. I'm part of what you call the third culture kid generation. And AUR is a very international community. It's very similar to the community that I grew up in. And I wanted to continue my higher education in a similar community. Mm. I also came to AUR because I uh, wanted to study international relations. And the international relations program is very good here. Um, they use you know, not only Rome as a classroom, but also the rest of Europe and even Africa. <laughs> you know, they take their students on one credit or sometimes even three credit academic field trips where students learn you know, hands-on, and it was a great opportunity. Did you do any of the on-site trips? Right? Yeah, I went to, um, oh god, it was a long time ago. I went to Vienna. Oh, wow. Yes. And what did you do when you were in Vienna? We visited OPEC, the Red Cross, um, and we visited other international organizations, but I can't remember it. No, it was, only, it was only three days, but we visited all the international organizations that are in Vienna. And the same goes for Geneva. Wow, and that's one of the reasons why students do pick AUR, and that's one of the reasons why I picked AUR. Um, I'm originally from Hawaii. Hawaii is very small, <laughs> and we don't have a huge international population, and I really wanted to be exposed to new cultures. So I thought Italy is beautiful, and I love the Italian language and the food, of course, so why not merge that with getting a great education and academic excellence? Um, we have one question Great. Uh, already, a uh, pretty simple one. Do we accept Common App? Yes. Awesome. So we do accept the Common Application, and that you can do online. And then you always want to follow up directly with admissions at aur.edu to ensure that your application um, has been received and you have submitted all the necessary documents. I do want to note that we do not accept the fee waiver. Uh, we do require that all students pay the 50 euro application fee that is necessary for your application to move on and go to the um, interview stage. Mm -hmm. Great, um, thanks for your question. Oh, hello, I'm Eliza, an international student. I want to know about the undergraduate program. 
programs. Sure. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Uh, we offer 10 different undergraduate programs. We have art history, uh, communications, film and digital media, international relations, business, film and digital media, Italian studies, interdisciplinary studies, and fine arts. arts. Right. And the fine arts is a really interesting program. They actually work with painting um, and making your own art. Uh, I did business, and business focuses not only on U.S. business, being an American university, but also on international business, and uh, really getting hands-on. And the final project that we do is a comprehensive uh, paper similar to the thesis that IR students do, and it's all about um, focusing on a company and doing a business plan. All right. Yeah, great question, thanks. One more. Um, do you do it, accept advanced placement credit, uh, as in A-levels or IB? Yeah, we do, we accept both. Um, Melissa, I believe that you came in with some IB advanced placement. Right. I did, and um, AUR actually gave me an advanced placement of, uh, I believe, 30 credits, so I saved up to a year of my undergraduate career, and um, they made the cutoff mark is four. So if you get a minimum of four in your IB standard level exams, you will receive three credits. If you get a minimum of four in your IB higher level exams, you'll get six credits. And that's great for all of you guys who are doing the IB program, which is the International Baccalaureate. And I know it's really hard, and we notice that the students who do that program are very successful in college because you can write great papers and you're used to doing all that hard work that college is all about. Yeah. yeah. So it's a very good program. Great. Another right. question. We do have another question. Um, hi, I'm Freddie from Bolivia, and I would like to know about engineering programs for undergraduates. Hi, Freddie. Unfortunately, we do not offer engineering programs. Uh, we are a liberal arts university, so we focus on humanities. I wish you the best of luck in your search, and if you ever want to study abroad and take some extra academic electives, we're always here. <laughs> Great. Um, all right, speaking of study abroad, uh, what what options are there? Do we have affiliate schools? Can you study abroad by yourself? Yeah. So there's different types of studying abroad. One is students who come to AUR to do the study abroad. And those, those students come from all over the world. We have independent study abroad that come from independent schools, such as Vienna University, or a university in Mexico, or a university in Paris, or wherever. Then we also have study abroad affiliate programs, which are universities such as Michigan State University, Boston College, Northeastern, and they come to us with um, a program that's organized by their home school. Can they your students go there too for a semester? So that's another great question. Yeah. <laughs> so AUR students have the option to study abroad wherever they really want. Um, you just would have to organize with the registrar before. So, for example, I studied abroad in Santander, Spain, uh, at a university there. I studied Spanish culture and Spanish language for five weeks, I believe it was, a little while ago. <laughs> and it was great because I got credit. I went to a Spanish school, met a bunch of really interesting people, and um, I definitely recommend studying abroad. I don't know if that's already by, um, did you pay for AUR through student loans or did you pay for it out of pocket? So I paid for AUR with student loans. And did that cover your study abroad experience as well? It did. Okay. I don't know if we still offer that program anymore through the company system. Um, however, you can study abroad at any school that you want, paying the tuition of that school. So if I wanted to go and study abroad in a Spanish school in Spain or the American University of wherever, uh, as long as I take classes that will transfer back to AUR, that's fine. Right, that's actually what I did. I took a leave of absence from AUR for about a year and a half, and I studied abroad for a year and a half. Oh, great. And I studied abroad in 
El Paso, Texas. <laughs> wow. So an international <laughs> student who wanted to get a American campus feeling. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you did a year and a half there, and then you came mm -hmm. back to AUR to exactly. get your degree. Exactly. Yeah, that was absolutely possible for students who want to go to the States eventually and do a semester or a summer or even a J-term abroad. Great. All right. Um, one quick question. Do we have online or blended courses available? Yes, we have just started offering online and blended courses. So you can take them from the comfort of your home. <laughs> yes. Great. And actually, online, I'm uh, currently in grad school right now, and I'm doing my classes online. And I found that it's quite challenging, to be honest. It is. Yeah, I prefer to be in class face to face. It is. It takes a different type of studying. Uh, you really have to be self motivated mm -hmm. and make sure that you participate in the group discussions and facilitate facilitated conversations that your teacher or professors provide you with. So the online courses that we offer, blended courses, can all be found on our website at MyAUR. And if you just click on the semester you're interested in studying, it will pop up with a whole list of the different courses that we offer, so you can start imagining what your life would be like at AUR. So just going back to the application process for a second. Yeah. Um, if I'm an international freshman, mm -hmm. so which means I did not go to school in the United States, mm -hmm. I attend school elsewhere, what documents would I have to submit? Sure, so as an international student, we ask that you submit um, your high school transcripts, uh, two essays, so one is 500 personal statement, one is 250, and we're looking for an explanation not only about yourself, but also we're looking at your writing structure. So this is a great way for you to kind of explain to the admissions counselor uh, why you want to come to AUR, what makes you stand out from the crowd, and why you think you'll do good here. Would I, would I have to submit the SAT and the ACT exams? So we do waive the SAT and the ACT for students who went to international schools. Uh, we do require that if you did not do your high school in English, that you have to submit either a TEFL or a YELTS. And we look at that during the application. Okay. Um, and do you have a minimum requirement for the TOEFL and the IELTS? Yes, we do. The minimum requirement for the TEFL and the YELTS is... I think it was 80 when I was employed. It was 80. <laughs> yeah. I want to say it's 79, 80. And um, all of these can be found on our website at www.aur.edu. Um, and in case you're thinking about you know, priority deadlines or when to apply, we do actually run on rolling admission. So that means that we accept applications all the time. Um, and the priority deadlines just are suggestions that you know that you can apply and get priority in the admissions process. It does not mean that it's over, deadline is passed, and you can't apply. Right. So what are the deadlines for the fall and the spring semester? So for the fall semester, it's generally March 31st. And for the spring, it's October 31st. Uh, these may change very semester to semester, year to year. So please always confer on our website at www.aur.edu. Click on admissions and it will pull up with our deadlines. All right, and we have another question. Um, about This one about master's degrees. Well, this one's about, do, uh, is asking, do we have a master in medical? Um, I'm afraid not. <laughs> I, mean, I know that. <laughs> we, do not, <laughs> we do not offer um, medical. Again, we're humanities, a liberal arts university. So we don't offer masters in engineering or medicine or science. But best of luck. <laughs> we do have two master's programs. Yes, right? that is true. So we do now offer two master's programs, one in cultural heritage management and one in religious studies. And these are one-year programs, accelerated programs. And they're about um, 13,000 13, 13, euros. 13,000 euros and about 13, 13 months that you mm -hmm. have to do the program. There is a component where you actually do an internship as well, if you'd like, 
that gives you a really great chance to go out into the world and utilize all the skills that you've learned in the program. And the great thing about doing a master's and even doing your undergraduate internationally is that you're not only learning from the professors, but you're also learning from your peers who are international. I'm sure you had several classes where there were a couple Americans and some international and some from Africa and Absolutely. some from Russia and all over the world. Absolutely. In fact, because you know we had heated discussions between the Syrian in the room and the American in the room, and it just got very heated sometimes. But yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Well, and that's the great thing about choosing an international university. I mean, I know it's not easy, an easy decision, especially because you're going so far away from home and totally brand new. Mm -hmm. But you know, AUR is a really um, small, close-knit community. We have about 500 students in our undergraduate program. And we really look after everybody else. And it, I'm still in touch with everybody that I graduated with. And we still go have coffee. And when jobs come up, you know, everybody's calling each other like, hey. <laughs> so and that's really nice, because you do have this sense of alumni family. Right, you create bonds. Yeah. And that's forever. Exactly. Yeah. Um, going back to the whole semester things, um, do you, does AUR have any other additional semesters apart from the fall and the spring? Yes. So we have two summer semesters. We call them summer sessions. And then we also offer a January term, J term, and that goes in January. Okay. And these are great options for students, perhaps, um, who want to do an accelerated program and do everything in three years or for even students who are studying at our home university and want to just come and check out Rome for a semester. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great way to learn about our community. Okay, I have three questions lined up great, wow. really quick. Um, first one, is there an orientation week? Yes, absolutely. Orientation week is a blast. So student life team goes and picks you up at the airport and they're all wearing their AUR shirts, and you guys get on buses, brought to your apartments, and then we organize different activities. So there's room walk, there's dinners, there's um, all kinds of fun activities. We do a barbecue. I remember that there were also, on, the first, on my first and second day here, there were also very important sessions on like financial aid, you know, there's a financial aid seminar on how to do your entry and exit loans. And I didn't do two of them, I still went. Because I'm American and I went. And then uh, I know that you meet, if you're a freshman, I know you meet your, uh, the director of the first year seminar, and you get to meet all the other students that come in with you. If you're a transfer student, mm -hmm. you get to meet the registrar, and she gives you an orientation all on the academic program and how the credit works and how the courses work here. And online, we get a tutorial on the online registration as well. Mm -hmm. And they go to the library, they learn about how the library works. Mm -hmm. They meet uh, with professors as well uh, in the garden during like, a, a little mini lunch. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a president's welcome. So if you want to bring your parents, or your parents want to come with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a, a, a day that's actually quite um, unpleasant. It is a day where students um, do placement tests. Yeah. So if you don't come in with any college credit or any advanced placement credit for English or math, you have to sit a placement test. We have placement tests in math, English, and Italian. If you've already done maybe one or two courses of Italian, you want to know where you are, or you want to place out of Italian if you're already at a very advanced level. And these are a great way for you to understand exactly where you'll be placed, and then we can put you in the right level so that you're doing the best you can. All right, second question. Um, how do I contact admissions? Yeah, great question. So you can contact us in a lot of ways. <laughs> College Week Live is a great way, or you can email us at w, uh, admissions at aur.edu, or you can find us on Skype, or you can find us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And the last question is about tuition. How much is great tuition? Great question. <laughs> tuition is 7,500 euros per semester. And this is about 40% less than uh, American universities. Tuition at AUR is, covers all the, tu uh, all the tuition, excuse me. And then housing at AUR is 
3,800 euros for the semester. And we have apartments located throughout the city. Um, that way you really get the full immersion cultural experience. So if you have any questions at all, you know how to reach me, admissions at aur.edu. Again, my name is Nohea, and I'm happy to answer any questions you guys may have. And it's been a pleasure talking to you all today. Well, thanks for coming, Nohea. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> Hi. Okay, well, we're going to have Ariana now, who's the director of financial aid. Hi, there you are. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Ariana. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Okay, how are you? It's a beautiful day in Rome today. It is, isn't it? This is sunny and warm, finally. Spring is here. Spring is finally here. I know, it's nice. It's bringing to that. Well, um, can you tell me a little bit about the uh, financial aid and the scholarship opportunities that we have here at AUR? Okay, so financial aid covers basically any kind of institutional or loan aid that can help you pay for tuition and your expenses while you're attending the university. So this means if you're a U.S. citizen, you could be eligible for federal loans. We participate in the direct loan program, which allows students to have subsidized, unsubsidized, and parent plus loans. Unfortunately, because we're a foreign institution, we're not located on U.S. soil, we cannot participate in the Pell Grants. So it's good for students to know who are submitting their FAFSA because usually FAFSA will say you are eligible for a Pell Grant, but unfortunately if you choose to come to AUR, um, they do not allow us to participate in that program. However, we are trying to, to get in there if we can. Um, other ways for students to help pay for their tuition is we offer scholarships. We have two types of scholarships. We have our merit scholarships, which is based um, on academic merit. So we take a look at your grade point average. Um, we also take a look at any kind of institutionalized test scores. Uh, on our website, under financial aid, you'll find a chart where it says scholarships and merit. And it has all the different three merit scholarships, faculty, alumni, and residential, with the amounts for each scholarship and then the requirements that you need. Um, don't be afraid if perhaps you went to a school in Turkey and you have um, a test that you took in Turkey and you don't see it listed as a test that we accept, please submit it anyways and we'll have a look at those test scores and we can kind of match it to the test scores that are listed. So we're fair for everyone, um, it doesn't matter what country you come from, just send us everything you know that we ask for um, and we'll see if we can apply that merit scholarship to you. And that is given to you automatically if you are accepted by the priority deadline for, uh, for admissions. So again, that is March 31st for the fall applications and October 31st for the spring term applications. Uh, we also have the need-based scholarships mm -hmm. and um, just other institutional scholarships. The need-based scholarship, um, you have to follow the application process that you'll find a lot online again under the scholarship page on our website. And you need to submit more financial kind of documents to prove that you have financial need in order to attend your university. Can, once, um, can a student get more than one scholarship? Absolutely. So let's say we have also some scholarships that um, are related to the program that you're studying. So you want to come and study uh, art history. We have a great scholarship called the Terry Kirk Scholarship that's offered to any art history student. Um, let's say that you are the recipient of the Art History Scholarship, you, in, you automatically receive the Merit Scholarship, you keep both of those scholarships. Let's say you have also financial need, you are welcome to apply for the Financial Need Scholarship as well, and if we you know, can give you the, the, the extra funds, then we, we certainly do. We don't discriminate on um, need base at all. Um, and the merit-based scholarship, is that just um, awarded my first semester, or? That's a great question, Melissa, because um, one thing for you to understand if you're applying to any school, uh, a lot of universities will kind of try to hook you by giving you a scholarship, but you need to always ask them, okay, this automatic scholarship you gave me, how long do I keep it? Um, it's important because a lot of schools will take it away after the first year. At AUR, when you receive a merit scholarship, you keep that scholarship as long as you maintain a GPA, a cumulative GPA of a 3.3. Okay. And what happens if I lose it? I just lose the scholarship? No, we give you a semester of probation. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> that's fine. You have one semester <laughs> to bring your GPA, your cumulative GPA, back up to a 3.3. Okay. Uh, and if you do so, you keep it. Okay. If you do not, unfortunately, we do take it away from you because your main priority here at AUR is to be an amazing student. So, great. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> um, going back to the whole long thing, because I, I don't understand it, and that's fine, but no with, my, okay. <laughs> <laughs> with my student loans um, cover all of my tuition and living expenses? Yes. Um, yes and no. Okay. It's a good question, and that's where we kind of get <clears throat> complicated um, in the student loan process. So basically, if you're eligible to participate in the direct loan program, the government decides if you're an independent student or a dependent student. Independent students typically are students that are over uh, 24 years of age. Um, if they have any dependents, meaning if you know, they have children, if they're married, um, those are all things that would determine what your eligibility status is. And those are some of the things that would determine you as an independent student. Mm -hmm. uh, dependent student is students that are under 25 and have no you know, children, they're not married, et cetera. Those are the majority of students. Um, this this, what this does is kind of separate the two, whereas the independent students would be eligible to borrow the direct subsidized, unsubsidized, and then whatever those two don't cover, the rest of tuition can be covered by um, a private loan or your own money, um, and that covers up to what's called the estimated cost of attendance. And the estimated cost of attendance, basically we do an annual survey where we ask our students, how much are you spending in toothpaste? How much are you spending in you know, going out um, with your friends? Obviously not crazy, but you know, for a pizza here and there. How much do you spend in groceries? Um, how much do you spend on your plane to get home to your parents once a semester? Mm -hmm. um, so when we calculate that, we come up with this estimated cost of attendance. So you can use your subsidized um, and unsubsidized, and then whatever we're not covering, uh, whatever that's not covering in the rest of the estimated cost of attendance, then you can have that covered by a private loan. If you are a dependent student, you, your parents could be eligible with a credit check of a parent plus loan, and that's through the direct loan program, and that plus loan would cover up, you know, up to the rest of the expenses. However, if you um, are a diligent student, and let's say you did not receive a merit scholarship, let's say you did not receive an AUR scholarship, because I think it's a good opportunity to just explain to everybody that we have a lot of applications for scholarships. We have a lot of students who want to come here, want to study. They're international students and US students, so we have a lot of students that want to apply for scholarships. It's very competitive. Um, so I'm reminding you now, get all the documents in that you require, make sure that your application is complete, make sure that you put effort into your application. Um, however, if you, cannot, if you do not receive scholarship from us, there's a lot of opportunity to receive uh, funds from outside sources. So maybe your parents work for a company that has put aside money for the children of their employees, like the Scholarship Foundation. You should always check, your parents should check on that. Um, sometimes governments will help subsidize some of the tuition payments for students coming from certain countries, so you should always look into that. Uh, another great example I have from an alumni who's extremely successful. She's the voice of space at the European Space Agency. <laughs> Shout out to Kelsey. Um, <laughs> she is amazing. She uh, got a scholarship to study communications uh, at AUR. And she received a scholarship from her hometown newspaper that basically paid um, for mainly her tuition and then gave her some expense money as well. And so that's another way. You never know what your options are until you look. And, and you should do a lot of research because you know, tuition is an, it's important. It's an investment in your education. So. All right, we have a question. Um, how would you guys suggest that somebody gets a high school professor to write a recommendation letter for application? Well, I would suggest that they ask. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, most high school teachers will write a letter of recommendation. Um, if you need help, perhaps your teacher, perhaps you come from a country where this isn't really in practice a lot, um, we are more than welcome to contact your guidance counselor, your teacher, anyone that you'd like for us to reach out and write an email explaining this is our application process and this is something that we need done for the application. So we wouldn't have a problem helping in any way that we can to communicate to your professor, teacher, guidance counselor, whoever it is, um, that we would need a letter of recommendation and explain to the person exactly what that is. And it's just really a reflection on how you are as a student. We just want to make sure that 
we get from a number of sources that you are as amazing as you say you are. So. And also, I know that during the, the online application process, when it comes to the section of the recommendation letter, all you have to do is insert the name of the professor or the name of the college counselor, their email, and we will automatically send them an email. Oh, perfect. Inviting them to submit this letter of recommendation for you. It's Fantastic. Thank you very much. All right. Um, no questions here. No questions here. Any more questions for me? Um, yes, I know that um, part of the scholarship opportunity is also a work, work study program. Oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. I know I worked at my you you did. on campus. So. You worked on campus. I did. Where did you work on a reception? Oh, that was the first space that anybody saw. Well, and what a beautiful place. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, we have a work study program, which I like to call student assistantship because it really has nothing to do with the U.S. federal work study program. Um, however, it's kind of based on the same thing. So it's a scholarship program. This is institutional money that we pay students to help assist us with certain administrative jobs, uh, assisting with professors, and also working in the library or the computer lab. And it's a great opportunity to get um, you know, a portion of your tuition knocked off and also build your CV, your resume, as you learn skills. And you know, a lot of our alumni write back saying, thank you so much for the skills that I learned in the office as I'm using them at my current job. Um, and you just basically apply uh, in the spring for the following year. Sometimes there are positions that open up in the fall, but typically they come out in the spring. You have to be in your second semester. You need a GPA of a 2.7 in order to apply to, to make sure that you can handle the workload and work yeah. 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 Um, And then if the supervisor calls you in for an interview, you have an interview. Um, accept you, then we offer you the contract. It's usually 20 hours a week, sometimes it's 10 hours a week. And that money can either go towards your tuition or if you paid your tuition in full, you can be paid out by the university every two weeks, I believe. I remember when I was studying abroad in um, the US, I wasn't eligible to work because I was on a student visa. Mm -hmm. So the program here, is it just for students, you know, for European students that have European citizenship, or can US students also? Anyone can do it, um, as we consider it a scholarship. And also, students here in Italy are permitted to work 20 hours a week on a student visa. So it's not a problem if you are offered a position at the university. OK. So in the end, it was a student with, you know, a good academic performance of the minimum would be a 3.3. 2.7. No, sorry, I'm saying in the end overall. Yeah. If I'm a student that has a 3.3 GPA, I'll get a merit scholarship, right? right. Maybe an eBay scholarship if I have financial need, mm -hmm. and then I'll have a work study for my second semester. Mm -hmm. My tuition isn't that high at all, is no. it? No, no. I mean, potentially you can you know, get your tuition down to, you know, I mean, it's very competitive to other universities, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you have any more questions for you, Arla. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. It was nice to see you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, we now have Clifford, who is a graduating senior. Is that correct? That yeah, is correct. Okay. Hello, Melissa. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. Bye, Cliff. Bye. <laughs> How's my hair look? It looks great. It's it's very nice hair, but very nervous. Why don't you tell us uh, where you're from? I am originally from. Virginia, but I came here from California, so United States. Right. Basically. And why did you come here? Why did I come here? That's <laughs> a great question. I had a start. I came to Italy, or I was looking at Italy first because of its history and its beauty. It's one of the European countries that if I ever said I could ever go to Europe, Italy would be the one country I would go to. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity, it was time for me to transfer schools, so I began looking at American universities in Rome, or in Italy, and Rome stuck out for its amazing history and just being, <laughs> in, the, in the past it was obviously the, the epicenter of the world, right. and still today it holds an insane amount of power and value throughout the world. Um, also, my aunt came here to work, and it would, you know, I would have family nearby, so that wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. And I found, then I found the American University of Rome, did, did some research, and it, it really seemed like it would meet my needs, and, and that it was a beautiful school, wonderful people, and I don't know, I just have this feeling that I should apply and see what happens. Great. Uh, well, I'm glad you came. Oh, thank you. I am too. <laughs>
But you know, coming from California and Rome is really different. How did you find that transition from you know the U.S. to Italy? Different is the best way to say it. <laughs> um, personally, I did not have a very hard time adjusting. Okay. The but my advice to other people is is to absolutely understand that these are different countries, not only different countries, but different parts of the world. So things are done differently, and if you're going to expect them to be done the way that they are done back at home, you will never be able to adjust, and you will never be able to find a fit, and possibly won't ever be happy. So you really need to kind of let go of how your routine in your normal life, how things operate at home, and accept this country for, for what it is and what it has to offer you. And when I think if a student you know, chooses an American University in Europe as their place for an undergrad, they're, you know, trying, they're opening themselves to everything, right? Oh. They're going outside the comfort zone, they're going outside the box. Oh, absolutely. It's kind of like a given that they need to accept that. Yeah, I, I, I think most people who, who are looking to study abroad, who are looking to venture outside of, of their comfort zone, um, won't have a problem with any, any sort of changes. They'll welcome the experience, look forward to the adventure. Mm -hmm. And what, an, what an adventure it is. <laughs> Great. And yours is ending, right? It is ending, unfortunately. I've had such a great time here. <laughs> but, uh, Did you study here? I, I am a business student. Okay. And business administration. Business administration, yes. Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration. Did you have a favorite course? <laughs> yeah, I did actually, which is which is weird is because my favorite course was the hardest one that I had to do. What was that? It was it was the end, it's it's a combined course, strategic management and the thesis. Oh right. So they're combined together. Um, why this was my favorite course, I don't know. <laughs> it took it took a lot out of me, but it, it really I think it prepared me. Not only was it the material very interesting, very intricate, I feel like it's it's a lot of times in school you learn a lot of theory and not a lot of practice. I felt this class had a wonderful mix of both. I could really see myself using all the information that I was learning. And at the thesis that you write at the end, you have to basically dissect an international company and find out how they work, how they operate. You get to know the ins and outs of international businesses. Wow, which is yours? It was, my, my corporation was the Brown Forming Corporation. And they are most notably, uh, they are most known for managing the brands Jack Daniels, Southern Comforts, Corbel Champagne. It's just a, it's so a alcohol. yes, <laughs> an, an alcoholic beverage company. Okay. Yes. Good. Is everything all right, Dimitri? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Sorry about that. Um, we do have a question. Okay. Uh, if you had one tip for Rome, what would it be? One tip for those coming to Rome, or yes. one tip for the, Rome, the city of Rome? No, for those that oh, are coming, coming to Rome. <laughs> those that are coming to Rome. <laughs> so yeah. city of Rome. I think it really depends on where you're coming from and, and who you are, how, what type of tip I would give you. Um, but I want to go back to what I said before. The main tip is to make, sh is to make sure that you just accept the, the way a different culture lives. Do not try to change it, don't fight it, mm -hmm. don't expect it to be like your home. Um, just know that it will be different and, and enjoy it. Experience how people live differently. And I think eventually, after a couple years, it will become home, right? It will. And it will become daily routine, and, and um, you might even not necessarily want to return. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go back? I am anxious to go back. I am looking forward to the new chapter in my life, getting getting started working on a career. Um, I am going to miss Rome and, and Europe as well, very much so. So um, I'm assuming you're like you know applying for jobs and things of the sort. I, that I kind am. of stuff. I am. Yes. It's <laughs> has the AUR helped at all with that? Do they have? Is there like a workshop that AUR has? I. I know there are. I have not personally asked for any assistance as of yet, but I know through internships, I know AUR is fantastic at finding internships for students. Um, as well as, I, I know if you approach almost, I'm sure there is someone designated, but I, if you approach any of your counselors in your major, 
they will absolutely give you any information they can and direct you in any way that will help you apply for jobs or prepare for your future. Yeah, I know I use like they they hold they hold like career workshops where they help you know write your resume and they you know. Oh, absolutely. I'm jobs. sorry. Yes, we have a, a, a resident resume expert, and he will personally take your resume, write all over it, tell you all the things and how terrible it is, and, <laughs> and what you need to do to make it better. So it's very personal. It's not like, oh, you should do this, these are the tips, but you'll get, you'll get all that, but you'll also get a very personal, he will get to know you and your exact interests and tailor it to you, and not just a, a broad general audience. Um, you might tell me more about maybe your experience in the classroom, what were your classes like? My experience in the classroom, it has been I mean, I know that you have to go to class because I know that there's a mandatory attendance policy. There is a mandatory attendance policy, which I, I do not mind. Okay. My attendance in the class has been uh, almost uncomparable to any other institution that I've been to, and I've been to a few. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a little while to get here. Um, the, 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 our class sizes are very small, which I personally love. It's very intimate. Um, they they fo really focus on participation. That's what I'm looking for. They really focus on participation. You get to know your professor. You get to know the people in in your classroom. Mm -hmm. I think it's much more conductive le to learning right. our classrooms instead of sit sitting in an auditorium full of 250 people that you probably have never talked to or never will talk to. You probably don't even know your professor's name. They don't know who you are. Um, Actually, that, that's exactly what I found when I was studying in the U.S. I love being in a very, you know, really big campus, but all of my classrooms were auditoriums, and my exams were scantrons, and yeah. I never had to once write an essay. I never, I could never speak in class because there was just no, you couldn't participate. It was right. just the professor lecturing, and lecturing, and lecturing, and lecturing. And it's almost as if they don't, they don't really have the need or want for you to participate. Mm -hmm. Here, they want you to get involved. If you have any questions at all, at any time, you can ask and and get get um, expert feedback. So it's, it's, the classrooms here are fantastic. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I have two more questions. What is your favorite thing, and you can answer it in order, what is your favorite thing about the American University of Rome? Okay. And what is your favorite thing about Rome? All right, let's go with the university first. Okay. My favorite thing about the university currently is the community of the university. Not only was my instruction wonderful, I love my major, my teachers in my major, which was business again, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> really plugging the yes. business program in there. <laughs> and uh, however, above that was the community of, of the students. As soon as you walk through the gate and enter our campus, it's, we have our, our own little world in which everybody knows almost everyone else Everyone is friendly. There are people from around the world, so you get different perspectives. You learn how different people live, where they came from. Um, we all we all hang out afterwards. We go we organize parties, and, and everyone. We do Thanksgiving, right? We have Thanksgiving. We have oh, just so much. We do so much. Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween contests. Halloween contests. Halloween <laughs> <Yeah. Halloween laughs> parties. We, and not only are you hanging out, but it, it gives you a large support group. If you need anything, if you're having a hard time for whatever reason, mm -hmm. there is always someone who's willing to help you. Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't been able to find that in any, any community college, any university. You will have your group of friends, but here it's almost as if the entire university, you're all in the same boat, you're all coming from different places to this one, one spot, mm -hmm. and everyone is, is willing to meet you, to get to know you, Sounds like you and I had the exact same experience. Yeah, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do many years back. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay, and the Rome question? Oh, my favorite thing about Rome. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing about Rome has to be. There's only one right answer, actually. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that the American University of Rome is here. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about the city itself is a tie between the aesthetics. And, and the history. Um, 
we have amazing views, especially on the terrace here at school, where it looks over the entire city. And it, I don't know if I've ever been to another place like it. It's, it's a fantastically beautiful city. And there are so many other things to do while you're here than just go to school and then go out at night. You, there are so many different monuments, museums, day trips around Rome. There's the so parks. many parks. The parks, absolutely. We are, what, two minutes away from the largest park in Rome? Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much to do. It's culturally rich, it's historically rich. And I think that there's just never a dull moment okay. here in Rome. Alright, um, uh, I have a again. question really quick. Um, are there clubs in AUR? Um, is there clubs and sports teams? And if so, have you participated in any? Yes. <laughs> I actually didn't, but you go ahead. <laughs> I mean, we have, I can't tell you the number of clubs we have, but there are a lot. I, mean, I know we have a film club, a volleyball club, mm -hmm. yoga club, mm -hmm. um, a culture club. I remember I was in the culture club actually, nice. and we actually went to Venice once. Ooh, mm -hmm. nice. yeah. We also have our student government, my particular favorite, the business club. <laughs> Okay. Oh, actually, and also each department has its own club as well. Oh, the Tiny Studies Club. Right, the International Relations Club. There, there are a vast number of different clubs and activities that you can completely participate in. On the first day, we have a welcome barbecue, and every club is represented. You come, you ask questions, and then you just sign your name. Right. Very easily, painless. Mm -hmm. And even if there is not a club that you want, it is very easy to start. Right. You just go and talk to the administration and uh, get a plan for getting it going, and boom. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your favorite club was oh, the business I did. Club. Also, we, <laughs> we also do have two very impressive soccer football teams, right. of which, are, which are very popular. I did not participate in the boys or the girls. Mm -hmm. I did in the girls. I went to one game and then never went back. Oh, that's yeah, They're but really I did score one goal. I know. <laughs> um, I yes, I am the president of the business club, so I've been very involved with that. And our main duties are to number one, um, we teach we, te we teach uh, business practices through hands-on methods because we provide all of the merchandise to students for the university, such as the shirt. I'm wearing right now. So AUR okay, cool. Yeah, all the AUR gear comes from us and we run it as an actual business. We get no help from the university itself. We have our advisor mm -hmm. who is the department chair of the business, club, uh, business department. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we are charged with talking with the suppliers. We have to get the price, make sure we have enough in the budget. Mm -hmm. We have to do multiple marketing campaigns, surveys, to ensure the line that we have is what the actual students want. So it goes through all of the major, um, all the major functions of the business. And it's, it's just fantastic. We, we try and throw as many activities as we can on campus. We hosted a um, faculty and staff appreciation barbecue. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Oh, and alumni. <laughs> and and um, with our, with our, the redesigning of our school's logo, we have just introduced new shirts, which mm -hmm. is the one I'm wearing today. Very nice, it's very nice. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to mention something about student life. I am also what we call here at AUR a Rice grad. It stands, it stands for resident graduate. <laughs> um, however, I did not graduate yet. But <laughs> what we do is we're very heavily involved with the students. Hold on, you said you didn't graduate yet, but it's called a resident graduate. Yeah. So even students who haven't graduated yet can apply for this program? Absolutely. Okay. It, the name, it works. It feels right. good. It was initially intended for graduate students who didn't necessarily want to leave yet, or mm -hmm. really were very involved in, in the life of students who wanted to stay and not participate. Mm -hmm. um, today, it is, it is opened up to still undergraduate students. But do you maybe have to have this? Specific standing, maybe a junior or something. You know? I'm not sure what the specific standing is, mm -hmm. but oh, we look for those who have a uh, wide knowledge of the city. Okay. Because we, in the first week, we give tours of Rome mm -hmm. and of the neighborhood. We take everyone to their apartment, as I mentioned earlier, 
and we are also there to help with any questions about how to live here in Rome, what to do, where to go, um, how things operate, any question you could ever possibly imagine. But there's three of us, and we're always on campus to help answer those questions. Uh, we also take the students on on trips. Mm -hmm. We have, I think, almost every other weekend, we take trips to, um, I don't know, I, know <laughs> I don't know the word. word. Like to landmarks? Yes, landmarks. You can okay. say landmarks <laughs> that are that are inside Rome, but also outside of Rome that students may not necessarily know exactly how to get to. So I remember you went to Tivoli last weekend, right? Yes, we did go to Tivoli, and, and we. What's special about Tivoli? Tivoli is first of all a wonderful little town, but it's also the site of a couple of villas, namely Villa d'Este, which is right off the train. Two, two minute walk, three minute walk. And there's also a Villa Aurelia, which I believe is, was Hadrian's villa. It's also known as Hadrian's villa, the Emperor Hadrian. Mm -hmm. It's where he lived. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's absolutely beautiful up there. So you just go for the day, right? Just, the, the, yep, the just day trips. Take the train in the morning. We, we have a specific spot that we meet. Mm -hmm. um, we also go to different churches. We go to the beach. We go to can we just go all over the place? It sounds like a lot of fun, but also like a lot of work. What's the perk for you? What, what we do you also return? Did you mention that you're in student accommodation for free? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in return for being for for doing all this work, being a resident, being a resident, I have my housing paid for. I live in a student housing apartment. I have my own room, mm -hmm. and uh, it's all it's all paid for by the school. We also have cooking lessons. Every Monday night at our apartment, oh, so it's great. It's do also you, do you teach the cooking? I, I do. Oh, you do. Yeah. so you know how to cook Italian? I know how to cook Italian. Okay. I can show you a few things. <laughs> okay. But it's it's um, participating in these events is a great way to not only see the city, know the surroundings, what's get some perspective mm -hmm. of what's around, um, but to to meet new students and to find find more friends and just get involved. Right, and become part of the family that we were talking about before. Absolutely. Okay, well, I have one last question to wrap you up here, and I'll let you go. Great. What is the one thing you wish you had in your whole time here in Rome, from back home? The well, one thing I wish I had. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's a fantastic question. Um, while I think about that, I'm going to give a good tip. Unlock. <laughs> if you have a smartphone, unlock it. <laughs> Okay. Good. So that way you can just buy an Italian SIM and be be connected and have your internet on your phone in case you ever get lost or just need to meet up with friends. Mm -hmm. Unlock your phone if you can, because that has been pivotal in my experience here. Um, Are you dodging the question? No, I just I just don't think I have a good answer for it. I don't Mom, think there's peanut butter. Peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> peanut butter would be great. Above peanut butter, I, I think, um, man, what's the one thing that I always look for? I never had it. It has to be food. Right. I think, <laughs> I think in and out If I had an in and out if I could take in and out with me, mm -hmm. that would... That would be good. Yeah. Okay. I said, for example, um, hot water bottles. Hot, because it's cold? It's cold and they, you just can't find them here in the city. I you take that them. back. You know, <laughs> you know what I would bring from America? An air conditioning. <laughs> there you go. It's quite warm around here. Okay. Are there any other questions that you have at all? Uh, no. That's no. all the questions for tonight. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk some. <laughs> well, do you want to maybe share your whole life with the international students today? I'm not sure they're interested. <laughs> I don't think they are. Well, thank you, Melissa. Thank, thank you for you having for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. And remember, that if you have here. any questions, send us an email to admissions at AR.edu. Look us up on Facebook. We are the American University of Rome. There's also the AUR Admissions Facebook group that you can look us up. Okay? You can also follow us on Twitter at Life at AUR. Uh -huh. And on Instagram, AU Rome. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> with, with that, that without the Julia, Bye. Students, Streets of Rome. <laughs> Bye. Ciao.